Up to this point, all of our parts have been built in isolation, one at a time in separate part studios. This is often referred to as bottom-up design, where each part is modeled in isolation and everything is assembled in the assembly. What we haven't talked about so far is multi-part part studios in Onshape. In Onshape, you can model one part in a part studio, or you can model multiple parts in a part studio. So why would you model multiple parts in a part studio? There are a few different reasons. The first and probably most common example is multi-part modeling allows you to model unique and interrelated parts together quickly and easily. This is often referred to as top-down design. If you look at this cantilever clamp example, I've modeled all the unique and interrelated parts in a single part studio. And in building it this way, I've built in geometric relationships and design intent between parts. If I had modeled these parts in separate part studios, I would be going back and forth a lot, entering dimensions and figuring out values. And if I decided to change my design, I would need to change dimensions in several places. However, if I build all the parts together in the same part studio, I can easily change a single feature or sketch and have many parts update at once. So not only are the parts easier to create, but they behave better when geometry is changed. So building parts in a top-down manner or multi-part modeling in a single part studio makes it very easy to build parts with relationships to one another. But there are a couple more use cases where multi-part modeling can be useful. One good example of multi-part modeling would be using a part as a tool to be removed from or merged with a finished part at some point in the future. This is a common technique used in other professional 3D CAD systems that is often referred to as multi-body design. Essentially, you're separating a part, making modifications to that separate part that don't affect any other parts, and later merging or removing that part with another. One good example of this would be splitting your part up to shell it. In this example, I want to shell the handle of the squeegee, but not the transition. Right now, they're currently one part. But I can use the split command to split this into two parts. Then shell the part that I want. Because they are two separate parts of my part studio, I can shell one without impacting another. After the shell is complete, I can merge them back into one part with the boolean command. So that's an example of creating a separate part solely for the purpose of shelling that part separately from the rest and then later merging it back together. There's one more good example of multi-part modeling to mention. It's called bridging. Bridging is a common technique where a part is designed initially as two separate parts but is later joined with a bridge. The squeegee is a good example of this. If we roll back in its design, you can see there was a time in the design where the handle and the base of the squeegee were two separate parts. This is because the handle was modeled first, then the base for the squeegee, and the transition between them was saved for last. It isn't until I create the bridge or feature that joins the two parts that it is merged into one. So with all of this, you may ask yourself a few questions. One may be, what is the difference between this and multi-body modeling I've done in other CAD systems? While there are many similarities, it's important to remember that we are modeling unique parts in the part studio, parts that can have metadata, materials, and other information assigned, and can easily be inserted into the assembly. The next question that may come up is, what is the difference between a part studio and an assembly? It's important to remember a part studio is where parts are designed. Assemblies are where we bring together all of our parts, including all of the instances of parts, and we test out any motion in the design. Next up, we'll be discussing multi-part modeling in more detail.